Hey folks, it's Rithgar here, how you doing? I have finished doing all of the planting. I listened to what you said last week and I heard you and you said, well most of you said you wanted me to finish the planting before we come back this week because quite frankly it's been getting a little dull, so there you go. We have everything planted with barley, the entire map planted with barley. We've gone all the way round. It's taken a while. It took, we had to do all that plowing and then we, we spent a couple episodes doing some planting, but finally it is done. Well, not quite. One task left. We've still got to spread fertilizer across it. Now just ignore the whole needs plowing bit. We still need to spread fertilizer. We need to, we, we need to do something with getting some fertilizer or something spread on the map. Now we have unfortunately wasted 2.1 million liters of barley seeds and there's not a lot that we can do about that so we're just going to have to sort of pretend that we never bought them or something like that. I mean it doesn't really matter. We got 62 million dollars spare so we should be fine. We've got our two sugar beet harvesters over there. Now when we were doing our planting it actually deleted all of the sugar beet that was down here so that's kind of something that you know it's one of those unfortunate things that we're going to put up with and we're not going to worry about it too much. We will hopefully come back to doing something we're playing around with the sugar beet, but we may not necessarily be able to. If we can't, then so be it. Now, I do owe you all an apology, because I do ask you a question every week, and I do do my utmost to make sure that I implement whatever the results of the question are, but sometimes I'm not able to. Sometimes things get really, really delayed, so I may not be able to, like, do ramps with the, the sugar beet or something like that. Um... And there are other things that I asked you previously if you wanted, um, like uh, with the fertilizer, doing stuff with the fertilizer. We haven't got to that yet. I'm hoping that we will be able to, but we may not. We, we may end up having to leave this map without having done very much with the 8.5 million litres of um, fertilizer. You know, make, making ramps and stuff like that and jumping them. Because a lot of people wanted that, and I did say that I would try and do it. Um, oh! <laughs> That was so perfect. That was absolutely brilliant. Oh, that was that was absolutely perfect the way it just just touched in on the next bit of the ramp. That was absolutely spot on and beautiful. That really was. I was quite pleased with that. Um, yeah, you, you you may be able to tell. <laughs> right, where am I going? I'm I'm wanting to head back towards the farm. Um, we're going to return this seed drill. We're going to sell the seed drill. We're finished with this one. We're not going to be using it anymore on this map. We may use it on another map, I'm not quite sure, but we're definitely not going to be using it on this map. So while we drive back, rather than teleport this time, I asked you all if you would like me to, on the very last episode, plant a whole load of trees on this map. Um, just so that we could see what would happen if we planted masses and masses of trees, uh, what it would do to things like frame rates and stuff like that. Um, might be interesting. You know, we could always just let the trees grow something and, um, and then sort of see what they do. So, yeah. Did you want me to plant trees on the very last episode on this map and plant as many as I possibly could? Uh, 2,376 people answered that question. 552 said no. 1,824 people said yes. There's a resounding yes. It's more than uh, three quarters of you said yes, you would like to see it. So that is what we're going to do. I managed to avoid the car. Look at that. Miracles never cease. So yes, we are going to plant trees on this map on the very final episode. Now I'll try to fast forward time a little bit after we've done that so that we can sort of see what happens with the trees uh, once we've planted a whole load. And someone, I can't remember who it was, I'm, I'm absolutely terrible with this. I, I always, oh that was a beautiful flip. Is it going to land? Is it going to land it? Oh yes, that was absolutely awesome. We landed it as well. We had a proper barrel roll and full flip everything we, the whole works there it was you got everything i provide everything for you right here in this channel ladies and gentlemen full action shots all the lot it's, it's like um high speed chases hollywood themselves could not do better if you're watching hollywood i dare you to try and do better come up come up with something better if if you're watching um well to be fair hollywood as a whole is probably not watching these videos but uh, there we go right so we want to sell that one and now i'm thinking um so, uh, what was that? I was actually going to say something then, but um, I've completely lost my trainer. I got distracted by doing barrel rolls. So, yeah, anyway, we're going to plant trees, 
and we will fast forward time and see what they do and that's all going to be the very final episode someone provided me with some links to some very cool mods so we can plant more trees faster and better and i'm, I'm really grateful for those we will try to feature those in our final episode uh that's going to be in about a month so yeah we are running out of time so the next thing that we want to do we don't want to go there we, we'll just go to the shop let's, let's let's not worry about trying to do this properly let's just go into the shop but before i do my weekly question the question for next week um Oh, you're going to have to excuse me a minute. Something has gone in my eye. I was about to say it never happens at a convenient time. I had an eyelash go into my eye. Um, but then thinking about it, there's never actually a time that's convenient for an eyelash going into your eye, is there? It's, 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 it's never convenient. It's, it's always going to be inconvenient no matter when it happens. So anyway, it was inconvenient and it happened and it's now been dealt with. So the errant eyelash has been removed. So <laughs> <laughs> and we can continue on. Right, when we come to bail this map, we're going to be combine. After we've um, done fertilizer and everything, we're going to uh, hopefully be able to combine it. And then after we've combined it, we're going to want to bail all of the straw. So uh, a few people wanted me to bail it all as a standard size bales. Some people wanted me to do it as bigger bales. I'm not quite sure on that one yet. I haven't quite made up my mind on that because I've had all kinds of requests. But what I am going to ask you this week is what baler would you like me to use? Now, not particular baler, but what type of baler? So do you want me to use the Heston baler, which is the, the biggest bale? Um, that is a 6,000 litre bale normally. It's, it's a much bigger bale than normal. Um, we could use the standard square bale, which would be one of these or some, one of several others. Um, we can use a round bale, or we can use a small conventional bale, which is that one there, the Welga. So I will use one of those four, either the small baler, the a round baler, a standard square baler, or the large square baler, the Heston size squ uh, square baler. And then I will alter capacities and widths and everything else as I see fit when we get closer to the date. And I'll sort of make up my own mind on that. But I do want your suggestions in the comments. But which of these four balers do you want? It's your vote. It's your game. Head in the comment section down below. Let us know which one you want and why. And of course, don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner. Which type of baler would you like me to use to bail up all the straw on this map? Now, we're probably going to do it with two or three passes across the entire map I'm not quite sure how we're going to do it yet because obviously we've got this issue with the land being owned all the way around the edge of the map so I'll have to run some tests and stuff like that uh, but I will try to bail up all of these bales I want you to tell me also in the comment section do you want me to use like standard size bales um, if it's standard size bales I probably won't do that with a round baler I'll, I'll tell you that now because uh, it's just not going to work not if I'm trying to do the whole map in a single pass uh, that would have to be a uh, small small conventional standard square or large square it have to be one of those um that being said i could make the bale capacity a lot bigger and uh, i could use any one of the bales then i'm not really sure so what would you like to see what what kind of capacity for the bales would you like and what kind of um baler would you want so let me know in the comment section today. I'm, I'm really interested to hear all of views on that one. It should be quite interesting. Whichever option we go for, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to go to slurry tanks. And we want to go all the way over here. And we want to get a Marshall ST1800. Now, normally the Marshalls are red. So we're going to do something a little bit different today. We're going to go for a black Marshall and we're going to have yellow wheels to match the yellow lettering on the machine. I think that's going to be perfect. So we'll buy one of those. There we go. Back out of there and leap into our trusty Rollin' Rollin' TB320. I didn't realise it was called a Rollin' Rollin'. I thought it was just a Rollin', but apparently it's a double name. Um, and we can back up and we've got our ever so serious minion on the front. There we go. And oops, I've gone a little bit too far there. There we go. Hitch that one on. Now, that minion's looking a little bit dirty. I'm thinking that perhaps we should clean him. So that's going to be the next thing that we do. Because we haven't actually used a pressure washer at all in this map. For, you know, it, it, we just haven't used one, have we? So we do need to clean things. We, we do need to make sure that our machinery is nice and clean. Is there any way to put a placeable... Oh, we can put one right here. We'll put it in the entrance way. There we go. There, and... We take this Marshall slurry tanker looks very sleek. I like the black. I really do. That looks fantastic. That looks absolutely beautiful. I'm really, really impressed with that. So we'll come over to here and 
We're going to just stop there a moment, and we're going to... No, I don't, I don't want to do that. Uh, you know, I can't remember how to... Oh, press R. Press R to lose. Right, let's clean the minion. You go and wash your glasses off. And your, your hair, you, you're looking filthy here, mate. You, you really are. Oh, your glasses need a bit more of a polish. There we go. Oh, no, no, there we go. He's, he's coming to light. He's coming to light. That's better. Now we can see him. That's much better. He's looking a lot cleaner. So let's let's just clean off his roll in a minute. And that's looking a lot better already. Takes a little while. Is mind you, to be fair, he has just planted like um, 83 million square miles of barley. So I don't actually know how much. I think it's like two, three miles. Is is it two miles? I think it's. Two miles by two miles, so he's done like four square miles. I think a standard map is one square mile, so he's done four square miles of planting. At least I think that's what the sizes are. So let's just go there and put that one back. So now we've got a nice clean tractor. And I'm also going to, just for today, you can let me know what you think of this idea. Uh, dirt, we're going to go to off. And if I go back. So now we have applied a coat of non-stick paint to everything that we own. And it'll stay clean and shiny something that I particularly like and now if I go make the map a bit bigger and we will teleport over here just in front of where the cows are and we can go and load up our Marshall spreader Run around here now remember we had a little bit of silage left in this pit but we ended up um, we lost most of it well we lost all the rest of it there wasn't very much in there anyway we lost it because of the um, the drill it, it kind of just went through and, and drilled the whole lot now something about the slurry now i like this slurry pit i like the fact you can back into the lagoon to load your machine which is very very realistic my the farm that i was born on i mean this bit isn't quite so realistic to be honest the farm that i was born on we had a slurry pit like this and we left there when i was seven years old and we actually had a slurry pit like this it was one that you would back into and you would load up. Now, I remember the slurry tanker that my dad had. And I remember seeing it load. Now, this one, I did forget to actually alter the loading speed of this. So, it does take... It is... Unfortunately, it's a bit slow. So, while that loads, we will just have a little chat here. There's something I just wanted to tell you about. Was... See, my dad had this slurry spreader. And it wasn't that dissimilar to this one. Okay? And it had the, the whole um, thing like that for doing the spreading. And it would... Um, spray it out except i think that was actually the other way round so there was a, a circular plate behind it and that went straight out it hit the circular plate and the deflector then that the circular deflector that sent the slurry up into the air in a great big arc behind the slurry spreader but what it also had was this kind of tower on the top here it wasn't very tall obviously it was uh, it was about sort of up to there i think and it was a, a, just a square over the top of the slurry tanker and in the top of that, it had this square grid. And what it also had was this kind of bucket and arm. And this arm would come down with this bucket into the slurry pit. And it would fill up with slurry. And then it would lift up right up to the, the top of the, um, the tower. And um, keeping the, the bucket level. And it would get up to that point. And then it would lift up into the air. And all the slurry would drain down into the tank. And that's how you filled up this tanker. It was I've never seen one like it. And I've worked on a lot of farms, and I've never ever seen one that was actually like that in anywhere that I've worked, which was, I mean, it's, it seems a little bit odd. So I'm guessing it was quite sort of a, a rarity. It wasn't something that was very common. But what I do remember, I was very young, so because we were, like, go backing into this slurry pit, which was obviously quite dangerous for a young, so it was quite dangerous for anybody, really. You've got to be very careful with slurry pits, because they can be very dangerous. So I was had, I had to stay in the tractor. So I'm up in the tractor here, and I can always... Wrong one. There we go. I can always remember just sitting here. I would be sitting in the seat on the side. It was actually, there wasn't a seat. It would just put that arm down on the side. It was a John Deere 2650. Actually, no, it wasn't. It was a, it was like a 20... A 2050 or something, a 2050 S or something like that. Not a 2650, it was a little bit smaller than that. Um, so it was an old one with the rounded front on the cab. And the, you put the arm of the seat down and then I would sit on that. So I was only like five, six years old. And I can remember looking out the back and seeing my dad having to climb up the ladder on the side into the bit on the top of the tanker and then stamp around. And what he was doing while he was stomping around inside the tanker there he was actually, all, you, on a slurry pit like this, it sort of forms a dry crust over the top. 
and when you lifted up the the load of slurry to tip it into the top that dry crust wouldn't go down through the grid so he would have to climb up on a regular basis and then sort of stamp around over the grid on the top pushing all of the slurry the, the dried crusty bits he'd have to go pushing them down into the tanker and he'd do this quite quite frequently and so I, I always remember sitting in the cab watching my dad stamp around in the top of this thing stamping bits of dried slurry down into the tanker and once you got it into the tanker it was fine it would blast out through that through the nozzle without any problem at all because it was then small enough after going through the grid on the top if anybody else has ever used a slurry tanker like that, I would love to hear about it. I would love to know all about your experiences with it. That would be absolutely brilliant because I've never ever seen one. Not before and not since. Um, well, obviously, well, not before because I grew up on that farm, but not since either. Um, so yeah, it'd be absolutely fascinating to find out that other people have also had similar experiences with, with um, machines like that. So yeah, that was my experience when I was much younger with a slurry tanker. Now, I have obviously made a slight tweak to this one, so I'm just going to press H so that we can carry on up across here. I'm going to just move back for a bit of effect here. There we go. I think I think about there would be about right so that we can see it. And you might like this. It took me a while, but I finally figured out how to do it. And here we go. <laughs> I will never grow tired. Look at that spread. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, it did take me a little while to figure out how to increase the visual of the spread. Actually, increasing the fertilizer that comes out of it was no problem at all. I've gotten used to doing things like that, but increasing the actual visual, that took me a bit longer to figure out. I did finally figure out how to do it, and I'm very pleased with this result. Look at that. Look at that slurry. That is amazing. Absolutely massive spread of slurry going on there. And if you, if you look there, it's just like a flat plane that comes out. So, but yeah, overall, I'm very, very pleased with that. That is an absolutely huge spread of slurry that we're getting there. And I'm also quite pleased that I decided to turn the dirt off because I think it's keeping, I think it's giving us a nice visual there. So we've got nice clean machinery as we're working. But that, it's the, it's the really wide spread of the slurry. I absolutely love that. I really do. I'm very pleased with that. We might get some... We get a few more going in a minute and I'm sort of thinking that we'll mark around the edges of some of the smaller fields and then we'll use the slurry, we'll put hired help going and get slurry spreading on just about everything else that we can. If you know, if, if we can make this work, I'm, I'm pretty confident that we can. There we go. Absolutely. I, I really like the black and yellow effect of the Marshall thing as well. That's absolutely fantastic. The only disappointment I've got is that we can't colour the roll in. If we could colour the roll in black and yellow as well, it'd be brilliant. I love I love black and yellow together as a, as a combination. Black and yellow is an ab, it's, it's a really really effective combination. Helper D has completed their task. Helper D has just tried to run off the edge of the map and um, end things, but um, fortunately he didn't. He carried on. So let's just go on up through here, and I will start it right there. You don't own this field. That is going to be... That's always the issue. We don't own this field. Someone did actually tell me about a mod that I might be able to try to sort of solve this issue where I can... Um, or something that I can try where I can sort of see all of the fields that are owned for this particular map so that I can find out what I own and what I don't. Um, I will take another look at this. See if I can figure out a way to make sure that I own every field on here. Because I, I've, obviously I can go around and I can buy all of the fields that are there visually. Um, but there's fields off the edge of the map that we don't own. And that's what's causing this problem. Right, the moment our issue there is that I was just at an angle. So I don't, I don't want to be at an angle. I want to go straight. If I go there and go in a straight line. It should work better. Start it up again. There we go, that's better. Right, now it's going to work. So we should be able to go down to the end of the field. And hopefully it will execute the turn correctly and come back up. I mean, if it doesn't, it doesn't. We'll just have to put something else going. But I do want to get some hired help helping out on here. Oh, we've also got the issue with the field bit up here that's not owned properly. That is fantastic. I love that. I really do. I'm, I'm really pleased with the widespread on here. Obviously, the visual is clipping into the ground quite a bit in places but that's kind of bit to be expected I mean 
Oh, now it's going. Ah, we've we've come to that bit, that that strange little peculiar part of the field that nobody seems to own, nobody wants to claim ownership of. Right, just go on a little bit further, and we may be able to turn. I think we've got to go on quite a bit actually. So I said last week there was one little bit that I was doing. I can't remember what it was now, and I quoted something. I'm disappointed in you as the viewers of all of my videos I'm, I'm a little bit disappointed and oh I know why so I'm, I'm trying to get the AI I was, I was putting the hired help going and I'm wondering why it's not actually um, activating properly and the reason is I've forgotten to adjust the AI width of this so it's coming down and the AI width is the standard width of the machine it's just whatever it's um, normally set at. So it gets to the end and then it sees the next bit has also been done, which is why it's not working. So I, I need to make that alteration before the hired help will do this job on its own. And we will be using the hired help to help us out quite a lot. I think we'll get a whole load of tractors going, probably in our next episode. We get a whole load of them going. I mean, a lot of this has already been done, so it doesn't really matter. We just kind of need to trace an outline. And... Yeah, I'm not actually all that concerned about doing everything. I think we'll we'll do next episode where we do play around with it a bit, just kind of try out a few different bits and pieces. But generally, because we've got so much already done, I don't think it's going to make a vast difference if we have some of it that hasn't had fertilizer on. I think we'll be okay. So I gave you a quote last week. Try all that you know. No, no, do all that you know and try all that you don't. And not a single person got that quote. And I'm a bit disappointed in you. But that, nevertheless, this is not necessarily your fault. It's not something that is as popular these days as it once was. Um, do all that you know. Try all that you don't. Not a chance must be wasted today. That is from Lewis Carroll. And his absolutely stunning, amazing poem, The Hunting of the Snark. It is one of literacy's great, lit is it literacy? Lit liter lit literaries? You know, I genuinely, I know literacy is like, the, you know, reading and stuff, but it's, it's, it's one of the literary greats, put it that way. It's, it's, as far as I'm concerned, it's one of the greatest poems ever written. Um, oh, you know, you've also got Sir Edgar Allan Poe, who wrote uh, The Raven. And that is also an absolutely magnificent poem. Um, if you get time, find The Raven, read by... Uh, you know, I genuinely can't remember his name now. It's the guy with the really, really deep voice. Um, oh, what's he called? I absolutely, um, It'll come to me in a minute. He's got a really, really super deep voice. I'll look it up in a minute. I'll tell you before the end of the episode. Um... But he reads The Raven, and it's absolutely amazing. Listening to it read in his voice is just absolutely stunning. You, you genuinely haven't heard a poem that sort of impactful. And the best way to listen to it, get it playing on whatever device you want to play it on. Mute the, the, the vision of it, put a cover over it, tip it upside down, whatever it is. Put a, you know, turn your monitor off on your laptop, turn the lights off, lie on the floor, just lie down in darkness and listen to him read that poem it is absolutely amazing it really is it's absolutely stunning listening to that but the hunting of the snark that is another awesome poem and it's kind of a horror story it is kind of a horror story um because you know the ending does actually kind of make it into a bit of a scary story as well so with that in mind and because it does seem that several people haven't actually heard the hunting of the snark or have not read the hunting of the snark I decided that I was, I was wondering what should I do for a Halloween special? What 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 could I do on this map? Uh, well, not on this map. What what could I do on this channel as a Halloween special? Something that is a bit different that people haven't seen and heard before. What could I do? So, my decision is I am going to read The Hunting of the Snark. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do the video. I, I don't know yet. Um, I don't know... Uh, what I'm going to use as kind of a visual backdrop while I'm reading it because I don't want to take away from the power of the actual poem itself. It's absolutely amazing. It's hilarious in places. It's absolutely hilarious. It's brilliant. Um, there's so many different sort of aspects to it. And ultimately, though, 
it can be quite scary. It's, it's a scary story. It really is. And the, the, like the, the, there's bits of it that are genuinely scary. Uh, and when I was younger, I, I've, I've been listening to this story. I first heard it. I heard the musical performance of it when I was, uh, I think, maybe seven, seven or eight, something like that. And it genuinely scared me. It really did. And I've known people, uh, teenagers, who've been scared by the story. The ending of the story, there's certain bits of it that just sort of grab you. And it's like, well, that's actually quite spooky. And he wrote it as a children's poem. Lewis Carroll. He wrote this as a, a children's poem. And it it was, it's, he's, he's, for those of you who don't know, he's the guy that wrote Alice in Wonderland. And some people consider Alice in Wonderland to be his greatest masterpiece. The greatest thing that he ever did was write Gallus in Wonderland. But there are plenty of people out there who will tell you that actually The Hunting of the Snark is his greatest masterpiece. And Alice in Wonderland is fantastic and there's a whole lot of stuff that he did with that that is just amazing. But for sheer skill, for, for absolute sheer sort of jaw-dropping amazing fantasticness, um, it's the hunting of the snark and that's the one that you want to so that's what I decided I was going to do for my Halloween special I was wondering whether or not I would even do a Halloween special I've decided that I will do it I will read the hunting of the snark I've just got to find something to sort of put in the background I'm not really sure yet I might just have a few pictures or something like that so you can really concentrate on what's being said um, I genuinely don't know I might I might do one of the i might do a time lapse and instead of the usual time lapse music read the hunting of the snark instead now i don't know how well that would work i, I genuinely don't that that could that could end up just coming up like and it could just end up being really really bad I, i've got no idea but um on the other hand it, it could work it could be really really effective I, i've no idea i'll probably record um i'll probably record the reading and then look at it myself and see how it would sort of work being placed alongside a time lapse or not um and and then if i decide oh i don't really like this it doesn't work um i'll find something else to put it to so some suggestions we've got we've got a few weeks yet before halloween and you know what i'm going to be doing for the halloween special is there any for those of you who are familiar with hunting of the snark it's got to be some people uh, thousands of people watch these videos now which is absolutely mind-blowing for as, as far as i'm concerned it's it's just stunning so many people are watching these videos it's amazing so of all of you people some of you i know will have heard of hunting the snark is there any particular type of video imagery or something like that that you think would look really cool alongside listening to hunting the snark now the musical many more of you will have heard the musical than will have heard the original poem the musical is a very very um abridged version it's a very shortened version of the hunting of the snark um there's a lot more in the actual poem that doesn't get included in the musical for the simple reason that it would have taken too long to include all of it so they, they did chop chop out huge bits of it and some bits of it are not quite as good as other bits um there are some pieces that you know were cut out for quite good reason because it just kind of feels a little bit like filler rather than um absolute top quality but overall it's still his greatest masterpiece as far as i'm concerned it is just amazing so some suggestions i would love to hear what you have to say about this what do you think of it for those of you who've never heard of hunting of the snark uh, you may like it, you may not. Some of you may think this is absolutely the worst idea you've ever heard. Um, it quite possibly could end up being the worst thing I've ever done. I don't know. I've, I, I, I'm going to try it anyway because I absolutely love this poem. I'm really looking forward to doing this. It's something that I've been thinking about for several months now. And I'm genuinely looking forward to trying it out. So we'll see how this works. What kind of imagery would you like to see with a 150-year-old poem? years it's something like that i don't know um anyway i am running out of time so i'm gonna have to make some slight alterations to this spreader in order to be able to get the hired help to work properly because it's not going to at the moment it's not going to work because it's not going to recognize that um it, that the ai is not going to to work properly on it the next thing that we need to sort of take into account is uh, I've got all these fields all the way, there's all this land around the outside of the map that it keeps saying that we don't own, which is also really, really 
annoying and it's going to be a bit of a problem to finish doing this job so we, we've got to sort of I'm gonna to have to have a look at that and hopefully have that fixed by tomorrow so that we can carry on and we get a whole load of tractors and stuff going with a massive spreading now obviously we're not going to be spreading the entire map already said anything that we don't get done tomorrow I, I want a whole fleet of these going tomorrow just because I think that would look pretty cool and anything that we don't get done tomorrow we're not going to worry about we will then move on we've got other things that we want to do we need to feed the cows again they're running low on grass so we also need to get a load of grass in for the cows um the tmr is at the moment is doing okay and we want to buy more cows that's something else that we want to do and then we're going to have to be looking at what we're going to do for the harvest now we've got four combines all lined up with 90 foot headers however those 90 foot headers are going to struggle in certain places on this map there are areas of this map that are absolutely uneven and all over the place and i don't think those combines are going to cope with getting over the, over that ground it's just it's just not going to happen so we're going to have to come up with an idea do something for that as well we've got four weeks ladies and gentlemen four weeks before the new dlc comes out the platinum dlc and when that one comes out we are going to go and spend two weeks with unrealisticness on that map and then we are moving to australia and I have been told by the person that has created the 16 times map in Australia that it's almost ready. Right, see, we've this field here is actually already spread, so it's just saying done. Um, actually, there's very little point in me carrying on up here. It's already done. I know I'm doing a little strip up the side, but there's kind of an exercise in futility, really. What a waste of slurry. Right, we'll go and get some more slurry and then we'll be ready to carry on next week won't we we could spread a little bit around the yard here because we, we haven't got any spread here um but i have been informed by the genius that has made this map that it is almost ready and i will hopefully have it soon and by soon i mean like within a week and i'm very very excited about this i will do a first look we will there will be an extra video put out first look as soon as i got it so that i can um run around the map and take a look at it all when it's ready i will then tell you the name of the map and i will give you a link to the facebook page and where it's being down where you can download it from and everything like that because when he gives it to me it will be ready to go up for general release so we will have it as soon as it is ready and we can get this video out and you guys can all take a look at it and bask in its glory it is just amazing it really is some of the stuff that some of the pictures that have been coming off of this map are just stunning they really are absolutely incredible it's, it's like properly it's it's proper blow you away type stuff it's in, it's amazing so i'm really really looking forward to being able to show you all of that right we have completed our task we need to go and get a little bit more slurry question for this week is what baler would you like me to use when we come to bailing up all of the straw from this absolutely massive harvest that we will be doing at some point soon would you like me to use a large heston baler would you like me to use a standard square baler would you like me to use a round baler or would you like me to use a small conventional baler the small hd bales or which however you want to call them um it's one of those four so the large heston bales standard square bales standard round bales or small bales it's your vote it's your game head in the comment section down below let us know which one you want and why and of course don't forget to actually cast your vote in the top right hand corner and if you've enjoyed this episode then please head down below and give me a like and if you really enjoyed it please tell your friends all about me get them to come and watch as well that would be awesome but until next time thank you very much for watching this is Frithgar. Goodbye and see you later.